What's going on YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. Today you join me in my bedroom where we're going to be talking about whether I'm selling my M4, whether I'm keeping it. Apparently Ricky's buying a Quadrifolo, apparently Ricky's buying a GT3S, apparently Ricky's buying a Nissan GTR, apparently Ricky's buying an RS3. So I thought, little excuse to make a video. Uh, it's actually pretty bad weather this week. It shows rain every single day. So definitely thought it'd be cool to have a little one-to-one -one. and also discuss potential cars that could be joining the living life fast. So guys, as always, I hope you enjoy the video and I'll see you in a sec. Right, so what is going on with the M4? Well, I mean, so far, I think it's been a pretty cool journey. I've modified the hell out of it. I mean, definitely one of the more complete projects. I did the E92 M3. Obviously, we've also got the Honda Civic thing going. Um, a lot of you are wondering what's going on with the Civic. So look, the truth with the Civic is that I had a 52,000 pound bill with the M4. I didn't get a bank loan. Uh, I actually had to borrow the money to clear off that balance, which means I'm not sitting there with a 500 pound bill or a 700 pound bill every month. I'm having to clear that balance off as quick as possible. So it's not an excuse it's just me being sensible obviously i was in a bit of a pickle um when that m4 situation happened so yeah the civic has kind of taken a back seat only recently did i sit there and think ricky why have you not started this build there is no excuse and i sat there and thought it's because every time ricky's getting paid via anything to do with youtube as i say i'm being sensible and i'm clearing the balance off which isn't cleared but i am very sorry for the people that have been messaging me on facebook instagram i've been getting emails i'm seeing comments on all of my videos and i can promise you that civic is going nowhere and we will be doing something ridiculous with it it'll be even more savage because of obviously this whole situation so just thought i'd clear that up quick back to the m4 we've changed the turbos we've changed the color of the car we've done wheels suspension brakes we've done the interior we've done a full because exhaust system recently I put up a post on Instagram and I just noticed how all of you were like just get rid of the car Ricky get a new car I'm like it's the first time I sat there and thought you know what maybe I should just get rid of it let me just get a new car like I know there's a lot of people that really love that M4 and I absolutely love it as well but for living life fast to keep moving forward it's definitely going to require more cars if you want to make exclusive content you want to make fun you know interactive content you've just got to have shit loads of cars or you've got to be doing the car reviews which is what I do most of the time because they do have viral potential the nissan gtr video that just went live yesterday in my world is yesterday it did 140,000, no 130,000 views in 24 hours you know so views means more subscribers it means ricky can bring better content you know if you watch these american channels this is the most annoying thing about it all if you are tuned into these americans believe it or not these guys almost make 50 percent more revenue than we make in the uk it's not quite 50 percent. so if i was in america now i would be basically making at least 30 to 40 percent more revenue which is why these guys are just out there doing craziness but look let's keep to the topic i've done a shitload to the m4 and i sit there and think after reading that post i was thinking should i do more handling modifications you know i could potentially build the engine i sit there and think i don't think there's anything more that i could do with the m4 to get a big reaction you know of course i love my m4 and you know if i wasn't doing youtube like i would just keep the car forever you know i absolutely love it the car drives amazing but what do i do next like you know do we keep the M4 or do we build another car or do I just pick a car just for driving, you know? When I say driving car, I'm talking about do I go buy a Quadrifoglio, do I buy a Porsche GT3? That's what you'll keep saying, Ricky's buying a Porsche GT3. That would just be goals, like in life, you know? A Porsche GT3, it's a car that I wouldn't even want to touch. Problem is that how much content do I have there? You know, okay, I'll chase my heart, go with my dream car, but what's that gonna do for the growth of living life fast? How much content do I have with that car? Am I really in a position to be owning a Porsche GT3? And it's the same mindset with the Quadrifoglio. What am I gonna do with it it's a car the quadrifolio is a car that i'd want to jump in and just drive i'd go do track days maybe just change the tires do some light light modifications and go drive it but i don't think that means loads of content for you guys so as i said i'm just speaking my mind i don't know how i'm structuring this video but that is the debate i'm having right now like even with the m4 look you only see me doing mods and i did a track day recently whereas when i was building it doing the pure turbos going over to belgium uh, there was loads of content you was getting to see a bit more of ricky's personal journey so i need to decide do i build another beast which i'm definitely leaning more towards that or do i chase my heart purchase a car which isn't going to get me views i'm not even saying that i'm selling the m4 but there have been some amazing cars I've been out in that have kind of changed my mind and what else? Obviously every time I drive an Evo you guys know I lose my absolute mind, an Evo 6 
maybe as a, a, a project car, maybe after the Civic. Every time I get in an Evo, I just, I just, I lose it. I absolutely lose it. I cannot help but say good things about it. And it's definitely a car that will enter the garage, but whether it's the next car um, is, is questionable, you know. But I like the idea of buying a Sierra uh, Cosworth, a Sapphire, rear wheel drive. I, I can see myself in a like six, 700 horsepower version. Another thing is obviously reliability. You know, it's an old school car, it could get stolen. And uh, it's the same thing with the Evo as well. These cars get stolen, you know? So the first mods would definitely be like alarms and making sure that it's all like, you know, any car can be stolen. If they're coming, they're coming. It's as simple as make sure you've got insurance. Don't give your insurance company any excuses to not pay you out. Then you've also got the RS3. Obviously you guys know I always talk good things about the RS3. Look how many have been on the channel. I recently went out in Roberto's 740 horsepower saloon. Uh, what else did we do? We did the TTRS. We've been out in the uh, older RS3, which was 900 brake. We went out in the A3. Uh, those two guys, by the way, are both selling their cars. So are they moving to the new platform? I don't know. If I did go RS3, it would definitely be a new shape RS3. Still got to make the decision where I'm going to sell the M4. Even doing like a thousand brake, building the engine, uh, you know, turning the boost up, changing the turbos. Even these four wheel drive cars with seven or 800 horsepower are having traction issues. I'm just gonna be leading toward death. I never did what I did to the M4 to, to claim to be the fastest. You meet so many trolls online. Like, let me explain something to you. The Instagram community will make you throw up. Like, it's disgusting. Like, obviously me being in my position as a YouTuber, social person, whatever you wanna call me, people just wanna call you out and chat shit. It's like, really is off putting, there's a few, really negative companies out there, negative people that make the tuning community really shit. And it almost makes you think, you know what? I'm gonna keep my car stock and just get away from all that. But I love the fast car, do you know what I mean? So you've got to modify your car if you want it to be real, real quick. So the M4, the idea was just to do something different, have a bit of fun. Uh, I drove Peter's car back in the day. It wasn't about having the fastest car in the world. Uh, it was just about having a, a seriously fast car but still reliable and I can still vouch to this day that my M4 has had zero issues. Onto the GTR, like my god, like what an amazing experience. I mean it did 130,000 views in the first 24 hours, most views I've had in quite a long time on the channel. My god can only drive, like I think that's what made the experience, like when the owners really step on it, that is what can really make a video. And yeah, I mean a lot of you are at, in that video are saying, what, R right Ricky's buying a GTR? Jeez, we've been going a strong 25 minutes a lot of you were like yeah that's it ricky's buying a gtr i asked him it was a 50 grand build which isn't too too bad for that performance well, no, i've got 50 grand like even on medium boost i was just completely gobsmacked at how it felt as you so as you was commenting i was grabbing the, the seat belt like this i'm just holding on to it can i see myself in a gtr hell yes by the way i've owned a nissan gtr i had it about four or five years ago and the reason i sold it was because they're just expensive to maintain like your normal little bills you get in normal cars are not the same in the gtr i actually had a six thousand pound bill when i owned it and i was like what six thousand pound for like I didn't even know there was anything wrong with the car. I just said to them, oh yeah, can you check the gearbox? And it was like, yeah, uh, basically your solenoids are gone. You've got metal filings here and you've got to do it up there. It took it to a six grand bit. I was like, forget this. I'm not about this Nissan GTR life. That's when I part exchanged it for the F80 M3. So I've owned a Nissan GTR and I had no gripes. Like I know a lot of you don't like the interiors. It's a Nissan, like no disrespect, but yeah, they don't have the most amazing interiors, but let me tell you, when you drive one of them cars, if you're a real car enthusiast, an enthusiast who's enthusiastic, <laughs> a bit of a tongue twister, who's enthusiastic about driving, let me tell you, interior is irrelevant in these cars. Let me tell you, when you jump in an Evo, if you're about your driving, the interior is irrelevant. You will just be completely high off driving that car, pushing it. And I'm telling you, that's what I got with the GTR. My same gripe before I bought the GTR was, oh my God, the interior, the interior is terrible. When I got in it and I put my foot down, literally just went through about two or three gears. I was like, I, I took the car immediately. It was not even up for debate. I was, I took the car straight away. Yeah, the GTR, I would definitely love to own another uh, GTR. But what you don't hear is just how much these cars spend time in the garage. Uh, not factory cars, uh, but these built cars, ones that have got built gearboxes and built engines, you know, they're always in the garage. And it's not that these tuners don't know what they're doing, they're just temperamental cars. And you know, we are heading into, what, when did they come out in 2009? It's like 2020, so they've been out for 11 years. And I know you look at all of these G-Chars from the exterior, they look exactly the same, but let me tell you, each year is a totally different beast, man. You drive a 2009, 
to a 20, uh, 16, 27, 2018, they're a whole different beast. It's been 11 years, so there's been a lot of development. These tuners are starting to get a grip what needs to be done straight away off the bat. Basically, if you're gonna buy a GTR, you've gotta go in. Just like Oli said, you've gotta spend 50, 60 grand. If you want a car that's decent from day one, You've got to do it all properly. You've got to replace the parts and you've got to service these parts very regularly. I don't think I'm ready for a GTR build yet. I mean, I'd love to do a 1200 brake GTR build, but it's going to be very, very expensive. And the way I drive cars, I don't know. Like, there's not many cars that last with, with Ricky for some reason. Um, saying that, the only cars that have been good to me is my M3 and my M4 now. Um, I'll beat the hell out of them and they're just fine even highly tuned modified they're still fine let me tell you my GTR boy lights used to come up on the dash I used to overheat the clutch here the brakes I used to boil the brakes no cars usually last me so I can say if there's any tuners that are watching like Litchfield or JM Imports if you want to have my back whilst I own it then boy I'll be all over doing a GTR someone's gonna back me and like kind of not saying that they need to like build the engine for me but like if I know that you know those as I say like little niggly things like the gearbox like you're talking six grand it's not a cheap car to own it might be a cheap car to buy but it's not a cheap car to maintain another thing about buying a supercar like a 991 turbo or you know the GT3 or the Nissan GTR where do you go from there once you've bought these cars where do I go I can't go back down to another car now the expectations just get higher and higher and higher so uh, I do need to make a very smart decision on the next car but it could possibly be multiple cars i'm chatting to companies right now and uh yeah something's gonna go down man something's gonna go down you know you never know we may keep the m4 and we might may buy another car so uh, just to clarify am i selling my m4 and in short no i'm not not yet anyway uh, anything is obviously possible in the world of youtube so it could be yes could be no who knows uh, I am going to end the video there because I have been talking for a very, very long time. So uh, what I'm about to do now is I'm going to make another video, but I'm going to talk about YouTube because I know a lot of you want to hear about whether you should start a YouTube channel. Like there's a lot of you that need help, you need advice, you need tips. Uh, I may even talk about what revenue I generate, how I make money on YouTube, you know, maybe that's interesting. Uh, there's definitely a lot of knowledge up here, you know, it's all I'm ever researching is how to yeah grow my channel so uh, i may shoot that right now uh, like i say the weather's pretty bad out there and uh, if you are new to the channel if you are a follower of living life fast definitely check out my vlog channel i'm going to be doing a lot of gaming videos and reaction videos i said it all on the other channel but please check the link in the description as always i hope you enjoyed the video if you did please hit the thumbs up and guys i really do mean it can you please hit the thumbs up it massively helps with videos getting out there so thank you to everyone that is always hitting the thumbs up also please can you subscribe to the channel as well i know i've got a shitload of subs but if you are a regular viewer of this channel i know there's a lot of you out there that have not hit the subscribe button all you've got to do is make an account subscribe and that's it i'll be so grateful like uh, so yeah hit the thumbs up subscribe if you're new and i'll see you soon thank you for watching bye